Hey everybody, I have some good news that I'd like to talk about with respect to the Melon B District, the space underneath New Jang City over here on the right, that is led and guided by viewers like you. Well, first of all, before I even get closer, I have been changing out the table legs for my entire layout for a while. I first did the ones kind of inside just so that when you look kind of through the hole there, you don't see the, the bright white colored legs, but I'm starting to just continue that on around the sides. And I think that's really going to improve the look of this entire place and just make it, I don't know, I just think it looks a lot better and is less distracting, I think, than the white ones when we get down here where there are a lot of them in the way. But the work that I did some time ago also with connecting some of these tables together, I can now remove some of these legs temporarily to open things up quite a bit when I want to talk about a specific area. So that helps a lot. And that takes us right to the main topic of conversation for today. Obviously, I got the Ninjago City Docks, and I did my full review of that, and I also did the quick review of it. So I'm done with that, with all of its, its work needs for now. So it's able to sit down here next to the original Ninjago City, which is one of the major inspirations for the, the space down here, since you guys decided that you want this to be a kind of cyberpunk uh, you know, styled area, the whole place, and that just, you know, really jump starts things quite a bit, the Ninjago City main, you know, the main display itself. But adding on that extra little bit off to the side really helped, helped things quite a bit for me because it started to, to bring in some shape for this whole place. And I, I moved the, the old, uh, the old, was it the haunted house or the, the vampire's house? This is the vampire's house, uh, over to the side here, uh, just, I don't know, it kind of looked like it started to fit in with, you know, some of the colors, obviously, with the, the sand green color on the, the docks over there as well. But also just the shapes and the height and everything. But it helped to to start to, to define some shape for the whole place, you know, not just that corner. Uh, with the idea that I'll have a small alleyway that goes back there. It'll be kind of wet because, you know, we do have this water line that goes along the outside of the Ninjago City here and the docks, even on the, the less wet side of it. You know, there's a lot more water behind, but, you know, I can let that be just, you know, dirty and have an alleyway that is not consistent. You know, it's not just a, a rectangular paved area and kind of just get some garbage back there around the side. It's a little bit more abandoned area of town out in that direction in general. And I mentioned this before, the idea of, of elevating the rail that goes around this. Uh, I, I probably will still look into the possibility of having some narrow gauge rail around here somewhere, doing some weird stuff, maybe using the uh, roller coaster pieces just to have it kind of, you know, twisting and turning through here and have some smaller maybe uh, drone-based delivery stuff to kind of take the place of, of uh, like a mail service or something. But I do still want to have a, a regular standard gauge rail going around. And I can do whatever I want, you know, with with what will run on that. I can actually run a train that's narrow, like that is mostly four studs wide if I just want it to look extra sleek and thin and not to be too large or I could go up to eight studs wide if I want you know I'll I'll play around with that a little bit and try to do some things might even take some uh, some inspiration from the uh, the solo movie conveyx train you know that's kind of a, a cool looking thing uh, you know might even just start with that and try to make a motorized version of that that that'll fit here using at least some of its pieces but you know that rail being elevated uh, really provides a lot of clearance. It goes over a lot of things that actually will go over some of the the space in the back of the Ninjago City docks area. And uh, yeah, I think it'll just work out pretty well. And that starts to get me thinking about, you know, how the how the space will be shaped up a little bit closer to us as I shimmy my way on back. I do have one of those table legs in the way and some of my wires are starting to get crossed. Sorry here. There we go. Oh boy. Okay, it's still a little bit uh, tight quarters working down here. I actually have a plan for that to, to help with that, but I, I can start to see some things going. What I want to do is introduce some diagonal streets, though. I, I might have a diagonal street that goes through here, or maybe just an alleyway or something that comes out this way. And also what putting the Sanctum Sanctorum set here 
uh, has helped with kind of in terms of vision is the idea that not everything needs to have full thickness back here you know I can actually use some relatively thin buildings since I don't have a lot of space to work here and I don't you know I don't want the whole display to be too deep because I need to be able to reach everything and plus you know it's, it's difficult enough to get the camera down there and to really see everything so the, uh, this idea that I can use some of the more facade like buildings is a good thing that will help with so many things. It will help with speed of, of expanding this area, it will help me to reuse some structures that are from the regular lines that I'm reviewing and it also will help me to give an illusion of depth if I start to stack things. So if I want to do some custom ones behind there, create a little bit of forced perspective, you know, create some, some smaller detailed uh, buildings behind to, to make it look like you've got multiple blocks behind. And very soon, hopefully, I'm going to be putting up the, the background back here, at least just a temporary one, just to start to block that off so you don't see anything else back there. And I've also decided that I'm definitely not going to take this in the same direction as the or even try to take this in the same direction as the old melon b layout that i had which was originally intended to just use you know official sets so this is uh, not going to be using a lot of the things that i had brought down temp temporarily to consider including some of the city sets and such a lot of that just will not be used here so more of that will be donated or sold, which is which is just fine. It means you know more work will be required, but that's okay. And I just finished my quick uh, review of this for the the quicker channel, uh, the Death Star. So I am now ready to start working on this. Ready to start converting this over to the cyberpunk. I guess it's going to be a shopping mall. It sounds like a lot of people liked that idea. It was just one thing that I threw out as a possibility, but yeah, kind of. Having this be a, a mall sort of thing, I think, is is the direction to go. And this is another place where it might be cool to have the, the roller coaster track coming around as a, a transit uh, style, you know, just a, a, a medium for, for moving goods around, if not people. But I also kind of want to have some coverage, like bring in some awnings, you know, kind of take some a little bit of inspiration from shanty towns and have this be more of a more of an underground kind of mall you know not not a, a super corporate one that's all fancy and everything so it'll be worn down you know reclaimed space just going with that that theme of of you know stuff that's that's not fully on the up and up <laughs> and uh yeah bring in a lot more color and just have these be different spaces i was actually thinking that this might be turned into a bank since it already has you know some of the security considerations there what do you think about that, turning this into a bank space? Just put a, a, a vault door behind that, or something that looks like a vault door. Put a whole bunch of, of money and, and, and uh, you know, valuables behind here and just let it be visible, but have a lot of security set up so that you know people can look at it, they can see what's in there, but if they ever think about trying to break in, it's going to be a real problem. <laughs> I don't know. Um, these I want to use these for something as well. I was thinking of, of just putting uh, just putting flags on them, you know, just to use them for decoration. Might figure out something else to do with that. This looks like the basis for a, a neon-based sign, so I might uh, might actually keep some of this in here and create some sort of attachment point where I can add in a larger sign, use some actual printed or, or I guess stickered parts on on top of that and you know this is not gonna have actual guns on it uh, this is not gonna be a very violent cyberpunk place yeah for the most part it'll be pretty well controlled in, in that sense but you know it'll, it'll definitely be dirty and uh, I've got all these spaces to, to try using so why not but the main thing was just that I do have uh, some direction going I like what's going on with the shaping down at that end and I feel like I'm finally able to move forward with this. You know, for for quite a while now, it's it's been kind of in limbo. I'm trying to figure out what to do, how to actually proceed with this. But now I have some some places to go and some things to do. The first thing that I'm going to be working on, because it's already here and it's ready to be worked on, will be this. I'll be tearing into that and decorating it up, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, the 
the tracks may be expanded out just a little bit more, take them farther around this place. I might have some ups and downs. I just leave that since I put it there. And, you know, it's an idea to go elevated back there, bring it down to the ground through the center section just so that it's not in the way, give us better view of whatever's going to be placed behind there. Think about what to do for a diagonal street, or at least one diagonal street, maybe multiple ones. Uh, obviously, those will have to be uh, done with, with custom plates down below, but I'm ready for that. And yeah, I'm just uh, ready to move forward. So I wanted to share that with you since good stuff is happening. I will talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any ideas.